Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for June 12th. June 12th is the 163rd day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 164th in leap years, with 202 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is jubate. Jubate is an adjective that means fringed with long pendant hairs, like a mane, a horse's mane, or a lion's mane, possessing a mane or mane-like hair. You're probably more likely to see this term in zoology as a term when defining a species, but let's see if we can come up with a couple of examples in sentences here, like, as the horses galloped across the prairie, their jubate necks presented an air of wild beauty, or the artist captured the essence of the jubate creature in her painting, emphasizing the luxurious mane that framed its face. The word jubate comes to us from Latin, not much changed from its original state. First known use of the word jubate is around 1820-1830, jubate. Now I love suggestions for word of the day, so whenever you come across a word in your reading that you'd like to learn more about, drop it in the comments. We'll take a look at it. And with that, this is the birthday of George Herbert Walker Bush, born June 12, 1924, in Milton, Massachusetts. He served in the Navy in World War II and then went to Yale University. After he graduated, he moved his young family out west and worked as an oil field equipment salesman and later launched a couple of oil companies, eventually moved to Houston, Texas. He got involved in politics in the 1960s, was elected to Congress, held several political positions, served as the director of the CIA and then as 43rd Vice President of the United States, and then as 41st President of the United States. He essentially retired after his presidency. Interestingly, he supported his son George W. Bush's candidacy for president, but did not actively campaign on his behalf. When the younger Bush won the presidency, this father and son became the second father and son pair to each serve as President of the United States, following John Adams and John Quincy Adams much earlier in the country's history. George H. W. Bush passed in 2018 at the age of 94. George Herbert Walker Bush. The National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum opened its doors on June 12, 1939. The museum has celebrated this day with great fanfare throughout the years. I happened to live in Cooperstown from 2002 to 2009 and worked at the Hall of Fame during that time. Back then, they would bring in a big old sheet cake, birthday cake, to share with anyone who might happen to be visiting the museum that day. I'm sure that changed in 2020, but they're definitely celebrating today as the Hall of Fame celebrates its 85th birthday today, June 12th, here in 2024. I seem to find it impossible to talk about Cooperstown and the Hall of Fame without mentioning that if you love baseball, you really ought to plan a trip to Cooperstown. It's a little village of about 1,794 souls as of the last census in 2020, but they do get a big draw of visitors in the summer. Since Cooperstown is in the middle of the state, I recommend flying into either Albany or Syracuse, rent a car to get there. You'll definitely want to make arrangements for lodging in advance if you're going in the summertime between Memorial Day and Labor Day because that's definitely the busiest time. Check out the Cooperstown Chamber of Commerce website for more information about that and I have included several links in the description. I do talk a bit more about Cooperstown and the origin story of the Hall of Fame in the live streamed episode I did last year in 2023 for June 12th and I'll leave a link to that as well. Note that there are a few baubles in that live cast. <laughs> I was just learning how to use my live streaming software so it's a bit awkward but we all begin somewhere. National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. This is the birthday of John Sidney Linnell, born June 12, 1959 in New York City, New York. He and John Flansburg formed the alternative rock band They Might Be Giants in 1982. And I started to say John, but there are two of them, so I'll specify that John Linnell's song lyrics 
tend to be unusual and occasionally dark, but they balance this out with cascading and upbeat melodies. <laughs> Sometime in the 1980s, the two found themselves in a position of not being able to perform due to an injury and other hardships. To counter this, they recorded their songs onto an answering machine and advertised the phone number in local papers as Dial a Song, which turned out to be a surprisingly popular service. <laughs> Back in those days, phones were landlines, and if the person you were calling was on the phone, you'd get a busy signal. You'd have to try again later. This led to one of the slogans for Dial a Song being, Always busy, often broken. <laughs> Also, it was a local phone number there in Brooklyn, New York, so a local call, but they'd advertise it with the line, free when you call from work. <laughs> I have no idea how they could have made money with that business model, but it was very popular, and indeed, it was always busy. The dial -a song answering machine broke down every once in a while, and it broke down for sure and true in about 2002, and fans responded by sending the guys similar answering machines. Word has it that the dial -a song was reactivated in 2015 with a new toll-free number, so I checked that out and it does work. I <laughs> put it in the comments if you want to check it out. Dial -a song. John Linnell, as quirky as ever, I'm sure, turns 65 in 2024. Happy birthday, John Linnell. We have a playlist of episodes for this day in history, as well as a playlist of single subjects called How About That and Words of the Day and a playlist called There's a Word for That, all right here on this channel, and I'll leave links to those playlists for you. It seems like we ought to talk about a song that They Might Be Giants has done since it is John Linnell's birthday. We talked about Istanbul, not Constantinople, back on May 6th when it was John Flansburg's birthday and Birdhouse in Your Soul on April 25th, a nod to that day's word of the day, Avant Garde. It felt like I might have talked about this next one before, but maybe we haven't yet. I can't find it if we did. But here's the story. The song called Why Does the Sun Shine was originally recorded by Tom Glazer and Dottie Evans as part of an album set called Ballads for the Age of Science, somewhere around 1959 or 1960. One of the albums in this set was called Space Songs, and it included the song, Why Does the Sun Shine? All these decades later, I have no recollection of exactly when or where I heard it, but I did hear it when I was in grade school, and it caught my attention, and apparently I'd listened to it often enough that I'd memorized part of it. <laughs> Occasionally, it would pop into my mind, and I'd break out singing portions of it for no particular reason. Please tell me I'm not the only one who does that. <laughs> anyway, one day, my grown daughter and I were going somewhere in the car together. That's always a great time to sing random songs. <laughs> and she recognized it as a song that They Might Be Giants had done. That's about the time I was introduced to They Might Be Giants. I didn't even remember the title of the song by then, but I just like to sing it sometimes, like a nursery rhyme, if you will. And it is, Why Does the Sun Shine? Delighted to learn the name of the song, I became an instant fan of They Might Be Giants. They're unusual for sure and true. They have albums of songs they've written and several educational children's albums, which include the song, Why Does the Sun Shine? I'll include links to the original version and They Might Be Giants version in the description in case you'd like to check that out, listen to them, and possibly compare them. Why Does the Sun Shine by They Might Be Giants. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with a link in your email, messaging, or social media. If you enjoy this series, you can check out the playlist that contains these videos. I'll put a link to that in the description. That description lives on YouTube, so for other platforms, I'll include a link to my blog page that's called No Really. <laughs> you can also find me on Rumble, a bit shoot, and Odyssey. All those links in that description. Alrighty, that's all I can think of right now. Thanks again and I'll see you next time. Alrighty, back to work. 
I think we got it this time. <laughs> 